come to this high mountain summit and uh, we are very happy that uh, so many of you are able to able to come and uh, and I'm also very happy that we have high level people around this table. C'est un grand honneur pour la Suisse d'accueillir ici à Genève ce premier sommet sur les zones de haute montagne et j'aimerais à ce pupitre remercier l'organisation météorologique mondiale d'avoir pris cette initiative d'organiser ce sommet, de le faire en collaboration avec d'autres organisations des Nations Unies, avec des partenaires, des scientifiques et des donateurs. Il reste beaucoup à faire et nous devons définir ensemble les mesures prioritaires. Nous devons le faire de manière coordonnée pour faire face aux changements brusques et durables que subit la cryosphère. Et dans ce cadre-là, il n'y a pas seulement les États qui ont un rôle central à jouer, il y a aussi les organisations comme l'Organisation Météorologique Mondiale. Vous êtes les acteurs, euh, les spécialistes de ces questions liées au climat, au cycle de l'eau, et donc les acteurs clés pour relever les euh, défis actuels. So we said the crossfire play a very important, significant role in the global climate system and the social economy. And I think Arctic and Antarctic get a lot of attention, but somehow the mountains are in a second or third place there. The mountains themselves provide services for the whole world. They are a global public good. We feel there's a certain support that's needed from the international community to all mountainous regions to generate and support this global public good that the mountains deliver throughout the world. The increased risks of flooding uh, from uh, snowmelt, glacier flow in some areas, but very often rain on snow, uh, is uh, tremendously important. And rapid environmental changes in the mountains are making them unrecognizable in our lifetimes. Uh, there are circumpolar uh, wildfires occurring in and beyond the Canadian Rockies that are causing smoke to drift over to the, to the glacier and deposit soot at the surface of the ice. Uh, it is darkening the surface, lowering the albedo and increasing the melt but it's also triggering a feedback loop that keeps uh, impacting the melt rate once the smoke is gone. There is more, per more carbon today stored in the permafrost than we have in the atmosphere. Permafrost has not been melted for 20,000 years. It's melting in very large regions. We are mentioning here 15 million square kilometers. If that permafrost gets into the air, and it does when it melts, it decomposes, we can double the current CO2 within a certain number of decades. We know that there is about 40 centimeters sea level stored in all the glaciers worldwide. Afterwards, they are gone. Today, uh, from a, a global policy point of view, the main challenge is the difficulty of promoting mont mountain as such as a global policy issue outside of the mountain community straight the impact on, of mountains on lowlands. Because you don't have a high visibility uh, and the global agenda, it's very difficult to access global funding mechanisms like the Green Climate Fund or the Global Environment Facility. Whatever we do today, specifically in the mountain areas, we have to know that we are making the right investment. As we think that the implementation of activities, including in it, will allow to improve the high mountain hydrometeorological and climate services and increase the quality of service delivery in major socioeconomic areas. Recognizing the importance of specifically addressing challenges in mountain regions for accomplishing many targets of Agenda 2030, the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, the Ministry of Re Environment of the Republic of Armenia is willing to support and be actively involved in the implementation of the proposed actions. So it's our job, our broader community who is represented here in this room, to make sure good information is available. And of course for that we need the research, we need the systems, we need the communication skills, we need the stakeholder involvement. It's urgent to act and to act now because mountains cannot wait any longer. And of course the idea of a new international mountain year is very welcome. Collective effort should also go toward the main funding agencies. We should collectively request the GEF, the Green Climate Fund, the Adaptation Fund, and other important financing mechanism to devote special funding line to mountain regions. Therefore, urge all of us here this week to also consider climate justice and the just transitions in society 
as part of the proposals that will shape and be specified in this call to action so that we may truly uh, travel along a climate resilient development pathway um, as it's stipulated um, and ensure that we sustain our efforts uh, into the future with the social license that we require for doing so. But what we expect is to have more people coming in to support the call for action, to make sure that we implement it. Having it just on papers, it will not help us. But if we act, implement it, it will be of beneficial to our people. It is not for somebody else to take care of it. It's for us to remain on the boat and to pull others in, to organize this campaign, to agree what we need to do, who will bring which resources. We will deploy this all in all the high mountains in the world or in selected places, and then a large part of it remains for the future. Change and development are creating an unprecedented crisis in our high mountain earth system that threatens the sustainability of the planet. Great urgency to take global action now to build capacity, invest in infrastructure, and make mountain and downstream communities safer and more sustainable.